Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to Forest Presbyterian Church where we're living God's heart, hands, and voice. It is so good to be with you again uh, today virtually, but one day here back uh, in the sanctuary. To those of you who would normally be with us on Facebook or, or YouTube, we're glad to have you here too. Wherever you are, uh, you are at home with us here today and we welcome you. Just a reminder, we can continue to give to Bedford Christian Ministries. If you have uh, items, canned goods to bring in uh, for Bedford Christian Ministries, uh, we, we will take those during the week. We're still here during the week uh, in the office. Uh, we, can, we can take those uh, gifts and, and, and spread those uh, out to, to Bedford Christian Ministries. We know this is going to be a tough time. For people still and and as we get the vaccine and things begin to to roll out again we hope that things will get better but we also know that it may be still tough for people and so we uh we would be doing this ministry anyway but uh but particularly in this in this season and at this time uh, if you want to be in connection with our church if you would like to know about what's going on uh, from day to day we have our email newsletter that comes out uh, every week you can sign up for that in two ways. One, you can go to our website at forestchurch.org and sign up for the website there. Sign, on, sign up on the website there for the newsletter. Uh, but we can also sign you up if you're having trouble with that. Also, if you think you should be signed up to the newsletter and you're not getting your newsletter, um, you might want to check on that. Uh, you can you can again go back and and sign up again on Mailchimp, and they will uh, send you a. Uh, confirmation that you that you're getting that uh, subscription so but if you're again if you're having pro any problems with that let us know you can also donate three ways one uh, is through the mail PO box 311 forest Tr at uh, forest Virginia uh, 24551 you can go to forestchurch.org slash donate and and get an account with Fanco they do account uh, donations either by uh, draft of your bank account or uh, through uh, debit card or credit card. So there are lots of ways to give to our church. Also, you can uh, donate in person. We would, um, if we're here during the week, we will be glad to, to accept those gifts from you too. Uh, as we continue in this uh, era of uh, social distancing and, and uh, being careful, uh, I appreciate your patience with, with, um, with our uh, decision to, to try to, to step back from things for a few weeks. Uh, we will come back on the 14th, hopefully, in, in uh, the sanctuary here. Uh, but in the meantime, we're going to be here until then online. So you can watch this on Facebook and uh, on uh, YouTube. If you would, it would be great for you to share and uh, like and subscribe so that you can be notified of when this comes out. We are scheduling these for premiere so that you will see them at 1030 on Sunday morning. And then if you get on there at 1030, you can live chat with the people who are watching. So you can still be virtually kind of part of a crowd of people uh, while you do that. You know, there are great ways to, to do that, not just with your computer, but if you have a smart TV, if you go on YouTube on the smart TV, it's Forest Presbyterian VA. Or if you're on Facebook, watch. Sometimes that's a little, more, it's, it's, it's funny. It's easier to find on your phone or your tablet or even your Facebook uh, on the computer. Sometimes when you're watching Facebook uh, on, online, it can be tougher to find uh, Forest Presbyterian on that particular app. Uh, but if you're looking for it there, it is there. Uh, you probably need to find Forest Presbyterian Church first. Uh, and and you probably there are other Forest Presbyterian churches across the country, so you'll need to add in Forest Virginia, just to make sure that you uh, that you find the right one. But uh, but again, um, we appreciate your patience in this time. Things are things are still different now, um, but we still have our uh, children meeting at 9:30 on Sunday mornings on Zoom. Uh, Sunday school still meets at 3.30 in the afternoon on Facebook. Those premiere at uh, 3.30 on Sunday afternoon. And, um, you know, we continue to be the body of Christ. We continue to be the church. We're connected through the Holy Spirit no matter where we are, uh, no matter what we're doing. Obviously, it's better in person. It's better when we're uh, connected one-on-one uh, -on -one visually. We can see one another and, and be with one another. 
but being, uh, being connected virtually is, is important too. So reach out to one another, check on one another, check on your neighbors, uh, check on your friends, uh, but, but be socially distant, be careful. Uh, we hear of the spread as, as sort of the nerve center of, of a congregation of people. I can tell you about a lot of near misses and a lot of, um, of exposures and those kind of things. And so, you know, be careful, uh, be as, as prudent as you can be. We can beat this thing if we if we do that. Uh, this is a this is a race. As one session member said, we want to finish this race strong. Um, having run a long race before, as you get to those last couple of miles, you start to kind of run out of gas, and you need something to to pick you up to 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 get over the finish line. We think this break is going to do that, but we also um, know that staying in touch and staying together uh, online will be part of of finishing and running a good race. So God bless. Thank you for being here today. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for gathering us together here today. We thank you for the gifts of celebration and music. And we ask that as we begin our service together and begin our worship together, that we would lift up all praise and glory to you for you made all things you are all things to us, and you sustain us every day. In Jesus' name, amen.
last Wednesday I came in to the sanctuary here to do my sermon for the Sunday and there was already some confusion and and chaos in my week because we had very quickly made this decision to uh, transition to an online service so I'm here I'm doing my service for the week I'm, I'm putting it together and and I finish and I see that there's my phone's kind of gone a little crazy and I was like what is going on and that was when all the turmoil was happening at the Capitol in Washington DC I say that to say uh, I hope you'll I hope you'll read my pastoral letter that I sent out uh, about this situation uh, if you'd like still like a copy of that I can get that to you but one of the things that I do every Sunday during the service as part of the prayers of the people as part of our worship services is, is pray for those who are in leadership of us I pray for uh, everybody from the president and Congress and federal courts to those who are uh, our governor or legislature, whoever, um, all three branches of government, and even those who are first responders and serve us on a, on a personal basis, people that put themselves into, into harm's way uh, from day to day. I think that last Wednesday proved that it is crucial for us to be in prayer for those who are in leadership over us. No matter who they are, uh, no matter where they come from, no matter whether we agree with them or disagree with them, uh, oftentimes God has wisdom through them that we need. And the rest of the time they need wisdom from God to know what to do uh, on our behalf. I once heard the Senate chaplain Barry Black speak at Montreat, and he said that you know, most of the times when people are making speeches on the floor of the Senate, that they are simply biding time to try to figure out what to do. And we realize that those people who lead us in Washington many times are overwhelmed with the responsibility that they have, not just for their own safety, but for the safety of everybody, for the welfare of everyone. So we need to lift them up in prayer as often as we can, without any kind of prejudice, without any kind of agenda on our part, to ask God to give them good things. And so today, as we begin our prayers of the people, we'll continue to do that, to lift up uh, their needs, to lift up our own needs, and especially to lift up the needs of our neighbors and our world. So let's pray. Gracious God, today we are thankful for the world that you have given us, for a bountiful creation, and for a place to live that in many ways is a land of milk and honey. But having put us here together with our neighbors, our families, with our friends, and even our enemies. We ask today for wholeness. We ask that there would be a community rebuilt in this nation. We pray, as Dr. King discussed, for a world house a household of humanity, your creation, your people that have been made in your image. We pray today for Washington and for the Capitol and for the many things that move quickly there in this coming week. Lord, we pray first for our sitting government, for our president and vice president, for our Congress, and for our courts, especially for our courts as they sort through the application of justice in the coming days, that those who have done wrong 
will find justice, but that those who have not done wrong will also find justice. And that somewhere, mercy will be seen as well. We also pray for our incoming president and vice president. For the challenges ahead are building trust. And building community. We pray that divisions would cease. And that peace would be sought. For we know that the decisions that the Congress and the President make are in so many cases affecting not only our own lives but the lives of people around the world. And so that we, we ask that you would give us freedom as we have enjoyed that you would not remove that from us. But in that freedom, you would give us responsibility as citizens first of this nation, but more importantly, as citizens of your kingdom. For we serve you. You are our Lord. And we know that if we follow your commandments, particularly when it comes to one another, the commandment to love one another. That we will move in the direction of your peace. We pray today continuously for those who have COVID-19 and need healing. We grieve the loss of those who have died we pray for prudence and safety among your people and among the world. We thank you for vaccinations. We thank you for doctors and nurses. We know that there are still other diseases that are out there. We pray that their care would not be pushed aside. but that they might be healed also. And we pray for caregivers and for those who are grieving today. We pray for your comfort. We pray, Lord, for the poor, wherever they may be, whether they are here in our nation where they are found too often or in other countries where they are more likely to be found. We pray that everyone might have enough, that all might be fed, and that all might know peace. We pray for your church, Draw us stronger and closer together. Knit us through the power of your Holy Spirit. As a tapestry of faith built from a diverse group of people witnessing to the goodness of God, to the glory of Jesus Christ. And through his power and his nurture through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our sermon text this morning is from the first chapter of John's Gospel, beginning with verse 43. Let us pray for illumination as we approach God's Word. Lord God, may your Spirit guide our hands across the page today to read and understand, to hear and and know to obey and walk. For your scripture is living and a two-edged sword, 
to cut us both ways. To cut through our false beliefs and to point us towards your ways. So speak to us today from your word. Amen. The next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our Lord endures forever. The beginning here of the Gospel of John, we see Jesus calling the disciples. In John, in earlier in John 1, Jesus calls Andrew and Peter. Here he's calling Nathaniel and Philip. These stories of call are great stories, and they have a couple of phrases that come up over and over again in John. One is to follow me. Follow me comes up over and over again. To walk in Jesus' footsteps. To follow Jesus' ways. The other is come and see. To come and see the goodness of God. Our story, your story, is a call story. Believe it or not, your story is a call story just like these disciples. You may not have met Jesus in Galilee, but you've met Jesus somewhere. And when you meet Jesus, Jesus says the same thing to everyone. Follow me. In the scriptures, The scriptures don't describe this new group of people, this new community around Jesus and the Holy Spirit as Christians. Instead, we're called disciples, followers, learners, over and over again. And for the church, those who were called out, You today are being called out to be a follower of Jesus. Not a follower of Morgan or not a follower of some other person. But this is a direct call from Jesus Christ to follow him. Getting up from what you're doing and following Jesus. I love the story of how Jesus calls these disciples because it is word of mouth call. And I suspect you've had some experience in your own life with people calling you to Christ in the same way. What I mean is look at Philip's discussion with Matthew, with Matt, with Nathaniel. Philip says, we found him about whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote. They've been reading their scriptures for the Old Testament. They've been listening to what God said, and they have heard now. 
this is the person who fulfills that word and who explains all of that to them. So Philip, having been called, goes and finds someone else. Now notice this is not a stranger. This is someone that he knows. And someone he feels comfortable enough sharing his faith with. Suspect that if Philip had found someone he didn't know and someone that he had not built a relationship with, they would have thought he was crazy. And I think Nathaniel thinks he's a little bit crazy because Nathaniel says, can anything good come out of Nazareth? What he's saying is, and I, what I, I know this in my own heart, and you know this too, everybody has that community that you say, oh, they're from so-and-so. Ah, uh, Nazareth must have been a pretty bad place. We know it was kind of up in the hills, and that it was a really small town. There wasn't a lot going on there. To come down to the Sea of Galilee, to come to Capernaum, would have been to come to the big city. Can anything good from, come from out in the sticks like that? That's where Philip says, come and see. Hey, you got to see for yourself about this guy. Many times, those of us who have said, follow me, fail to turn around and ask anybody else to come and see. The come and see is to invite others along the way. It's a kind of invitation, a kind of open-ended invitation towards Christ an open-ended invitation to see what you have seen an open-ended invitation to acceptance Philip doesn't judge Nathaniel Philip doesn't tell Nathaniel that there's something wrong with him and Jesus needs to fix it he says come and come and see I, I, I've heard everything from this Jesus of Nazareth. I want you to hear it too. The story of Jesus and Nathaniel is a curious one because it is involves a little bit of uh, mind reading and surveillance. In that Jesus says, here is an Israelite in whom there's no deceit. And it's got to be true. First thing out of his mouth, can anything good come from Nazareth? Nathaniel is somebody who is frank and speaks the truth. Jesus knows his character. Jesus knows what he's like. Is this a cold read of Nathaniel, or is this what he's heard from others? We don't know. And it doesn't matter. Jesus is the Son of God. It could have happened either way. But the point is, Jesus knows this person, knows him personally, and knows his personality. And Nathaniel's a little bit of a skeptic. He says, you, You've never seen me before, and I've never seen you. And Jesus says, No, I, I saw you. I saw you before Philip ever talked to you. Before you ever thought about coming here. Under the fig tree. The fig trees would have been for shade. The fig trees were not exactly the place that a wealthy person would look for shade. It would have been kind of out there in an insignificant moment, but it must have been significant to Nathaniel for whatever reason. For whatever reason, for Nathaniel, this meant everything he needed to know. And he says, you teacher, rabbi, or the Son of God, that you are the King of Israel. He goes from skeptic to 100% believer.
And Jesus has to put the brakes on that for a moment and say, you know what? I'm not done with you yet. And you're going to see more than this. We stand in Nathaniel's spot. Jesus is not done with us yet. And Jesus has got, has got more to show us and more to do through us and more to do with us. Do we really believe that Jesus is going to do greater things? I believe so. I believe that we've only begun to taste and see, we've only begun to come and see who Jesus is and what Jesus can do. Jesus has many good things planned for us, many good things planned for this world, and they're on their way. They haven't happened yet. And Jesus has a plan for you to be able to see and participate in those things. What would you say is the last time you saw Christ at work in this world? What would you say is the last time you saw Christ do a miracle in your life? Maybe worth leaving this sermon, leaving this time in the Word to take stock of that. To stake, take stock of the marvelous things that Jesus has done for you up to now. How has Jesus been active in your life up to now? What are the greater things? And what do you think that Jesus is going to do in the future? Through you? Through the church? Through your participation in the church? Through your participation in life? Through your neighbors? This is your opportunity today. Discipleship is a continuous process. The follow me is the beginning. The follow me is the next step. The follow me is not the end. Now to be clear, follow me comes up again in John. Particularly at the end of the book. Jesus, the risen Jesus, is talking to Simon Peter. And he says, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Feed my lambs. Lord, you know I love you. That passage, that passage ends with follow me. Even at the end of the book of John, follow me is the command given to Jesus' disciples. For the disciples, that was not the end of the book. I'm not even sure that was the middle of the book of their lives. But it was the path that Jesus had for them to follow him. What is it that Nathaniel's going to see? I'll see heavens open up and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. They're going to see God doing more things through Jesus Christ than they ever could have imagined. Because they got to personally witness the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. All the signs and wonders that Jesus did among his people, all the teaching, we get to hear secondhand accounts of that teaching. They got to hear it up close. They've forgotten more sermons by Jesus than we have ever heard. As the end of the Gospel of John says, the deeds of Jesus Christ would fill more books than have ever been written in the world. Can you imagine the Library of Alexandria trying to chronicle the works of Jesus Christ, much less the Library of the University of Virginia. 
Jesus did many things for many people and still does so today. Jesus is active and at work in this world, and discipleship means joining him and following him every step of the way. To reach out to our neighbors who are in need, to reach out to our friends, and to share with them. Come and see. When we minister in Christ's name, we should say, come and see. When we serve him, when we love him, and when we follow him, that is the path of discipleship for today. So come and see. Come and see the good things that Jesus Christ has done and will do for you. Amen. And now go forth, have a great week. Follow Jesus Christ out into the world. Share with others and tell them to come and see.